I'll just go through my basic setup of how I set up a chart because that's also a question I always tend to get is. So this is uh, your basic daily chart. Every single candle represents one day on the chart. What I like to do for my basic indicators when I start off is I like to always start off with the moving averages. So those are the ones that I go for. And of course, Benzinga has the cool thing where it gives you the moving average triple or gives you three moving averages. I don't use the default ones that they give me here. I personally, the moving averages that I like to use are the 21, the 50, not the 21, 50, the 50, and the 200 MAs that are the ones that I like to use just as my simple moving averages. You can color code them, of course, based off of however you feel comfortable using them. So for me, these are three very, very strong indicators I like to use. Uh, they're very good to use as uh, support. The 200 is kind of like you're one of the strongest ones that I like. 50 is one that I like to see it bounce. And if it's above the 21 MA, that's one of the biggest bullish indicators for me, just based off of these three of, hey, that this is a strong stock that is moving relatively well with it. And of course, we have Apple here, which uh, decided last week and to kind of rip this essentially since mid-February mid to start ripping through all three of these. Uh, and for those of you who don't know what simple moving averages are, each one of these lines takes an average of the last 21, 50, and 200 days and kind of draws a trend line for you based off of that, just a simple moving average. <clears throat> you might have also heard of exponential moving average that uses an exponential formula. I mainly use the EMAs if I'm ever day trading, which I rarely do. The EMAs are, in my opinion, much better than MAs for day trading. And for that, I use the 8 and the 21 in case anyone was curious. And then the next one that I like to pull up is, of course, the RSI, the Relative Strength Index. That one gives me an idea of if the stock is oversold or undersold. So your base area, if you're below 30 RSI, that means you are oversold. The stock is oversold. You're hoping to see a bounce there. A lot of traders like to use that. If the stock is oversold, to look for a bounce upwards. If the stock is I'm sorry, if the stock is undersold, if it's under 30, you look for a bounce upwards. If a stock is oversold, it's usually indicated by over 70. Now, this doesn't mean that if it's over 70, you're going to see a downward trend. Like, for example, we saw the craziness with CCIV. It was over 70, but it was still going wild and kind of doing its thing. And almost even saw 100 at a certain point. So that's kind of an indicator that I used here. And the other one that my favorite one, kind of like I call this one my fortune teller indicator, is the MACD. Um, you'll see these two lines down here. Every time they cross, it usually indicates that the chart is either going up or down. Um, so here, for example, you see the MACD for Apple is still trending downward. The RSI is trending up a little bit here, you'll see. So that's a good sign. You're hoping that the MACD will start to reverse and maybe sometime in a few days and start going back towards upwards trends. But of course, nothing is guaranteed. You have to look for the volume. You have to look for all that stuff. And you might be saying like, hey, where's your volume indicator? So the cool thing about the Benzinga Pro application is your volume is indicated right here for you already. So I don't have to add something to a, to a chart here that's already where I have so much valuable space that I don't want to take up. So I kind of leave that down here. So what I like to do is if I'm looking at this chart, for example, let's say I'm a brand new investor and I'm starting to, I want to build my IRA or my long account. And I'm looking for a good entry point for Apple is, so I kind of come here, I look at the like the past like 15, 20 days, I see where Apple's been. So I can see Apple here is, <clears throat> excuse me, a little bit oversold, it's not oversold yet, but the RSI came down to low low. So I would have been much better positioned if I'd bought two days ago, but that's completely fine. Um, I look here and I'm like, I start looking for the lower lows that the stock was, so uh, 120, 121. Uh, today, the lowest it was was 123. Uh, it opened at 123 and went down to 122. So I start looking there and I start, what I do is I don't always buy my full position and most traders usually never do at one shot because of course, as you've seen in the past week, month, it's been a choppy, choppy market and you always want to have some dry powder to be able to average down. You might be saying, what if I miss the train? What if this, what if Apple magically puts out a magical phone that can do anything and everything and the stock goes to 150? Well, that's completely fine. At that point, you'll just average up. You'll just set your base foundation and then you'll build on top of that. So with a stock like this, I'm looking at it here today. I see that it's broken through two support layers. It's Apple. So I've actually, we're going to assume you've done all the DD on the stock beforehand and you're ready to actually make your purchase. Uh, the stock is in lower territories. Uh, the RSI is pointing upwards, so it's a good indicator that the stock should continue to hopefully continue going up. But of course, nothing is ever guaranteed in the market. So what I would do is I would come, I would look here again. It's in between the 120s, 122s, 
if I wanted further confirmation, what the next thing I do is I come and look at the 30 minute chart. Uh, the 30 minute chart, uh, the previous chart was your daily chart. This chart is your 30 minute chart. Each candle shows you one interval of 30 minutes. This is a very, very good chart that I like to use again for finding entries. So as you look here, this is like the the dangerous demon candle that we had uh, on the on the 23rd where it was like, what's going on with Apple? We're down under 120, which is like what meant to be like one of the big support layers for Apple psychologically. But we're going to completely ignore that because the market was going wild. But if we look here, we've got like this buying box between, uh, again, 119.7. So we'll just round up to 120 to 124, which we are now. So in this area, we've got a little gap here. We're kind of gapped up. But it's an intraday gap, so it's nothing too crazy, and it's sort of been filled here in these wick downs. So for something like this, with something like Apple, where I'm going to assume they've done the DD and everything, I would first put my very first limit order at some, I would look here, like the lowest points that this was intraday was at like 121.26. Uh, it's going to be very hard for you to catch those very, very low, low points. So I put like my very first limit order. Let's say I was going to buy 100 shares. I would put 33 orders, shares, limit order. Never do a market order because your market orders, especially on apps like Robinhood, Webull, and everything, they will charge you a higher price. So you might click. You might see right now the stock is 124.61. You put in a market order in, you might end up getting charged 126, 127. So never do a market order. It charges you a premium on that. So I would do a limit order of like 122 or 123 for 33 of my 100 shares just to get that in there and then later throughout the day or into the coming weeks and so i would look for uh to see where the chart is moving again as if i see the chart is going higher and higher and i go back to my daily chart and i see that okay we're starting to regain the 50 ma and holding it you'll right now the 50 ma should probably be a will naturally be a form of resistance especially with the news that we got that the arc fund dumped all their apple shares which um it's never it's never um a confident it doesn't create confidence for the market when a fund dumps their shares but mm. again we know that apple is still a, one of the biggest stocks if not the biggest stock in the s p 500 um and it's one of those that has confident i have personal confidence in moving forward so like i would look for areas for it to bounce off of the 50 ma and come down if it breaks the 50 ma that's perfect i'd love that and then i would look to again add another position somewhere here but of course, if we go into a, God forbid, we go back into a market where we're going into a bearish market again, I would look back for the prior support levels of, again, if we look down here on the daily chart, a low of 118, I'd look for under 120 to add my second position. And then I, I wouldn't look at this chart for like another two weeks and then I'd come back and I'd see where the chart is going. Again, this is, um, this is just the mentality of a long position that you're building. I would come back and I'd keep my eye on it. And then I would say, I would look to again, hopefully I would want to average up at this point for my, for my final third of my position and kind of catch it around the time when it's finally breaking the 50 MA to kind of add my final third position. And again, I would use, I would go through the same pattern that I did the first time looking at the daily chart, looking at the um, 30 minute chart to find my, a good entry position so that even though I am averaging up or averaging down, I want to make sure that my stock that I'm adding, I'm getting the most bang for my buck. So maybe you can squeeze out an extra few shares, but again, with a stock like Apple, it's a little bit uh, much more difficult to do that because of the uh, price that you're going in with, especially if a lot of traders are working on a budget, especially retail traders. Um, one thing that I always get asked is, how, how do I buy, how do I stomach the idea of buying a stock like Apple or Tesla or Zoom or something like that? That's so expensive. It's in the three digits. I'm mainly used to buying a penny stock. So mm -hmm. this is what I would say to traders. It's always a great idea to a have a Roth IRA. That's the easiest way to get a million dollars. Um, again, over a longer period of time with a compound annual interest of 7% starting at whatever age you are, um, you will get to, you should get to, mathematically, you should get to a million dollars just based off how it is and you can connect it to index funds or etfs uh my personal one that i like is vti is a very good one that works with the s p 500 that doesn't have like a minimum of fifty thousand, like vtax i believe that one has a fifty thousand minimum so if you're a retail trader you can just open up an ira with your webull and or your uh charles schwab or whoever mm -hmm. and deposit the six thousand dollars uh maximum that you can do per year your annual contribution and just let that ride out. So is there, they is ask, there, like, is there a type of IRA uh, uh, that you like? Yeah. So I, I like the 
the uh, I like the Roth IRA a lot better because you won't be able to deduct your six thousand contribution from your taxes for that year. But the good thing about the Roth IRA is, let's say um, you 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 contribute all your money, you get to the million dollars off of pure interest because your principal, the only principal you can put in every single year is six thousand dollars. That's the maximum. Mm -hmm. You don't have to pay taxes on that money once you get to your retirement age. Uh, I believe it's 70 and a half or 59 and a half. It, I, it really depends. I'm, I'm blanking on that one number, but a quick Google search would solve that. Yeah. Um, you can then withdraw from your Roth IRA without any penalties or taxes. And you essentially get so much money that's just kind of like loopholed and you don't have to pay taxes on. So Roth IRA is a very, very powerful investing vehicle that is often overlooked by especially retail traders. And personally, I was uh, I didn't open mine until last year just because I was paying for college and all that stuff. But I like I opened one for my sister and just in, in a matter of a few months, like you can see the true impact that your money can compound. Mm -hmm. And the best part is you don't have to pay taxes on it. So even if you can't make your maximum 6K contribution to your Roth IRA, just keep it in the back of your head. Like if you have a really, really good month or a good week, um, to, uh, take out $100 from your trading principal and put it into a Roth IRA. So if you're on Webull, for example, you can open up a Roth IRA directly um, with your account. You just go to your account settings, you click open IRA, it takes like a day or two to process. Um, and literally you won't, it, look, it you're trading as if you're trading into an account, but please, please, one thing that I like to warn traders against, again, I'm not a financial advisor, but don't penny stock trade in your Roth IRA. You only have a 6,000 principal per year that you can use. Um, Let's say, God forbid, something happens and you wipe half of that out. Like you're losing so much money in the, in the long run with that money that could be made on in the index funds and ETFs. So it's one thing I'd like to warn against. But back to the original thing is how to stomach buying Apple or Tesla or something. Um, one thing you can try to do, you can't do it in an IRA as far as I know with partial shares. But if you're using like uh, Webull or I know we're not allowed to say it anymore, Robinhood or SoFi or one of those other apps, you can buy partial shares of this and make like a long account. Yeah. Um, and I think long accounts are a powerful vehicle too because you'll see the true power of these different stocks that you have and have watched them grow long term. So like if you pull up a Apple's like – um like long-term chart like i think we could pull it up here and we just go something wild like a monthly chart you'll see how fast like let's say you added apple back here in 2016 into your long account when the stock was only like 22 25 bucks and you can see how fast it's grown up and the stock has done like a stock split when it got mm -hmm. to like almost 400 dollars. so there's a lot of power behind the long account absolutely i, I love that you're bringing this up because I, I kind of feel like you've been reading my mind um, because I've been thinking about, and yes, I called it an RIA or uh, yeah, RIA. Hey man, it's okay. Um, it's I got really. <laughs> yeah. Well, y'all know what it is. You guys know what I'm talking about. Um, I've been, I don't have an IRA and I've been meaning to open one. So I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that you're coming on here talking about it. So I, I will be doing that now that I have that reinforcement from you, Ryan. Um, and guys post it up. Excuse me, I just spit all over the microphone. Posted up on the on the screen right now are the uh, uh, like moving averages and technical indicators that Ryan is using on Apple. Um, so that's the twenty one fifty and two hundred moving averages, um, RSI fourteen pretty much as always, um, and MACD, which you uh, Ryan, correct me if I'm wrong, but you call that your uh, fortune teller. Um, yes, my fortune teller. Can you can you can you go back? Can you look at MACD sure. um, really quick? Sure. And and can you just sh show us uh, uh, what you look for in terms of the lines crossing sure. as an indicator? So let me just pull up the thirty minute chart that, because it's a little bit it switches a little bit quicker here. So one thing that you'll see with the MACD, I use the MACD and the RSI kind of like a combo here. Um, the RSI can move for you a little bit quicker than the MACD, and sometimes vice versa. So as you see here, like let's take a look here. You can see that the, the stock here is, was in a massive downtrend. You can see that in the candles as well as the MACD. It is heading downward. But here you'll see like the RSI starts peaking a little bit, but the peak was rejected. And then you'll come down here and you'll see the RSI is finally moving up. And you'll see that the MACD lines crossed. Every time they cross, that means it's going to a different, um, it's going either up or downward. And again, look, just because the lines cross doesn't mean that the MACD is confirmed that your stock is now going to the moon. Um, you can fail a reversal of a MACD. And as you, you can see that here in like a few a few wicks, uh, you right here, the stock cross so as you see they're heading downward the lines are getting closer it, the macd flipped it goes up it goes up you start seeing this big 
demon candles that happen and they come in and then the stock crossed again and now we're heading downward so you can start seeing that within the rsi a little bit faster than the macd you'll see like little breaks wedges and flips up and down and then the macd starts heading downward downward again downward again and then you'll see again it, this downward was this time downward was rejected because volume came in and people bought and the stock starts going up so right here you saw these two little candles that we saw that wicked down so i'll zoom in really quickly so you might be like all right the macd is about to reverse but right here as you see the reversal failed and it never reversed to go back into a downward trend which is a good thing and it's still stuck in the upward trend here uh macd is one of those tools that i like to use a lot when i'm looking at bitcoin's chart mm -hmm. um because of how volatile it is and mm -hmm. that one's a monster to kind of move with and kind of read that chart but like for charts like this again uh but your 30 minute is your best bet and your daily is your best bet. Um, and again, you can move through time intervals to kind of get an idea of where the stock is going. So if you're a day trader, the one minute chart is your kind of like your bread and butter. As you see here on the 30 minute chart, the MACD crosses daily. I don't know, maybe 30, 40, 50, 60 times. Yeah. But again, for most of us retail traders, uh, we're swing trading. So again, the 30 minute chart, a lot of folks like to use the four hour chart. If, for example, if you're dealing some, with something like a SPAC, so I don't know, let me bring up a SPAC, um, I don't know, SOAK, uh, a new SPAC that I've kind of been playing around with. Here.